Was Jesus Christ a descendant of Adam and Eve? When God became a man, did Jesus become a member of Adam's family tree? Could the humanity of Jesus be traced back to the root of Adam? Or was he somehow exempt? Now there's many theologians that will deny that Jesus Christ was truly a son of Adam because they teach that all of the descendants of Adam inherit from him a sinful nature. They teach that when Adam sinned, his nature became sinful and corrupt so that from that point on, all of his descendants are born sinful and corrupt because they inherit their nature from him. So they would deny that Jesus Christ was a son of Adam because all of the descendants of Adam, according to them, inherit Adam's sin, guilt, and damnation. The Westminster Shorter Catechism says, The covenant being made with Adam, not only for himself, but for his posterity, all mankind descending from him by ordinary generation sinned in him and fell with him in the first transgression. The Catechism of Trent said, Wherefore, the pastor should not omit to remind the faithful that the guilt and punishment of original sin were not confined to Adam, but justly descended from him, as from their source and cause, to all posterity. Thomas Aquinas said, A human being begets descendants as in the human being's nature, and so a parent transmits to descendants the first sin that corrupted the nature. Wayne Grudem said that we also inherited a sinful nature because of Adam's sin. Louis Schaeffer said, The Augustinian or realistic theory holds that the connection between Adam and his posterity was such that by his individual transgression he vitiated human nature and transmitted it in this corrupt and guilty state to his descendants by physical generation. Adam's individual transgression resulted in a sinful nature. The volume, A Companion to Philosophy in the Middle Ages, states, Original sin, according to Anselm, is the sinfulness or guiltiness which each descendant of Adam incurs at his origin. For at his origin he inherits a sinful human nature, that is, when Adam sinned personally, his personal sin corrupted his human nature, with the result that the nature inherited by his progeny was also a corrupt nature. Louis Burkhoff explains how certain theologians have taught that Adam suffered the loss of original righteousness and thereby incurred the divine displeasure. As a result, all his descendants are deprived of original righteousness and as such, the objects of divine wrath. S. Michael Hoodman said, Because of Adam and Eve's disobedience, sin has been an inheritance for all their descendants. When Adam fell into sin, the result was every one of his descendants also being infected with sin. John Rodman Williams said that, We are all heirs of Adam and thereby inherit his sinful nature. What Adam became through the fall has been passed down to all his successors. While the Bible does teach that men are sinful, it doesn't teach that men are sinful because of the inheritance of their nature or because of the nature that they're born with. Uh, for example, King David said in Psalms 139.14, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. So here, it says that we should even praise God for the nature that we're born with, because we're fearfully and wonderfully made, and that the works of God are marvelous. Well, if we're wonderfully made, and fearfully made, and marvelously made, we can't say that we're sinfully made or wickedly made. Uh, you can't have a, a sinful nature that's marvelous. Uh, you can't have a sinful nature that's wonderful. If we're born with a sinful nature, uh, that's not wonderful at all. That's not marvelous at all. Uh, in fact, the Apostle Paul, in writing to the Romans, in chapter 2, verse 14, uh, he said this, For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these, having not the law, are a law unto themselves, 
which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. So here, Paul was teaching that our nature actually influences us to obey God. That's because God is the author of our nature. God's the one who forms us in the womb. And an element of our nature by divine design is this conscience. And our conscience will condemn us when we sin and commend us when we obey. And so we have a constitutional influence to do the right thing and a constitutional influence to avoid the wrong thing. So here our nature, rather than being sinful, is actually an influence upon us to obey the law of God. Many theologians just take it for granted that when Adam sinned, his nature somehow became sinful. But that's not actually taught in the Bible. Uh, the Bible nowhere says that when Adam sinned, his nature was now sinful and corrupt. Uh, that's assumed by theologians, but not explicitly taught in the Bible. You see, Adam did not have the power or the authority to change his nature, nor the power and authority to change anyone else's nature. Man does not determine what type of nature he has, and man cannot change what type of nature he has. But God, who is the author of nature, he can change and create man's nature. And so the Bible says God doesn't even tempt us to sin. So why would we conclude that God creates us with a sinful nature? You see, the Bible doesn't teach that God just created Adam and Eve and then stepped back to let nature take its course and that we simply inherit our nature from Him through natural generation. That's a sort of deistic worldview. But in theism, God is actively and personally involved in the formation of children. The Bible says that God forms us in the womb. While I'd like to do a whole series on the question of a sinful nature and whether or not man has a sinful nature, in this particular video, the question at hand is whether or not all of the descendants of Adam inherit from him a sinful nature, or if theologians were mistaken by saying that they did. We can say with absolute confidence that a sinful nature is not transmitted from Adam to all of his descendants because we have absolute proof. And that absolute proof is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was a descendant of Adam, and yet Jesus Christ was not sinful. And therefore we can conclude that a sinful nature is not transmitted from Adam to all of his descendants. Now it would stand to reason that if all of the descendants of Adam inherited a sinful nature, that Jesus Christ would have been included in the all. But since Jesus Christ was sinless and yet a descendant of Adam, then the Bible clearly does not teach that all of the descendants of Adam inherit a sinful nature. Now the part of this argument that needs to be shown, that needs to be proven, uh, which this video intends to do, is the part that says Jesus Christ is the descendant of Adam. Uh, was he truly uh, offspring of Adam and Eve? Was he truly a part of their family tree? Many theologians will try and deny that Jesus Christ was in fact a son of Adam because it's incompatible with their theory of the transmission of sin. But consider the following arguments. The Bible says that Jesus Christ was a descendant of Abraham, that he was born of the seed of Abraham. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promise made. He says not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Galatians 3.16 For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took of him the seed of Abraham. Hebrews 2.16 Since Jesus Christ was of the seed of Abraham, this helps us to understand why God said in Genesis 26, 4, that out of Abraham's seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed, because it was through Jesus that all nations of the earth could be saved. So Jesus Christ is the seed of Abraham. And this is why the Bible describes Jesus Christ as the brethren of the Jews. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren. Acts 3.22 
Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made likened unto his brethren. Hebrews 2.14 If Jesus Christ was not a descendant of Abraham, he couldn't be considered a brethren of the Jews. But Jesus Christ was an actual Israelite. He was a member of the tribe of Judah. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Hebrews 7.14 And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Revelation 5.5 5. The Bible says that Jesus Christ was a descendant of David, that he was of the seed of David. Has not the scripture saith, that Christ cometh of the seed of David, and out of the town of Bethlehem, where David was? John 7.42 Wherefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Acts 2.30 David, the son of Jesse, of this man's seed, has God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. Acts 13, 22-23 Concerning his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Romans 1, 3 Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. 2 Timothy 2, 8 Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book. Revelation 5.5 5. Jesus Christ testified to his own ancestry and heredity when he said this, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Revelation 22.16 When the Bible says, The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Matthew 1.1 1, 1. The word generation literally means source, origin, lineage, progeny, and ancestry, according to Thayer's definitions. The scripture also says, Mary, of whom was born Jesus, which is called Christ. Matthew 1.16 The Bible's teaching that Jesus Christ descended from Mary and David and Abraham have very great theological implications. What can we conclude but that if Jesus Christ was a descendant of Mary and David and Abraham, then he was also a descendant of Adam, because Mary, David, and Abraham all descended from Adam. See, this logical conclusion cannot be avoided, granted the premise that's given to us in the scriptures. Jesus Christ was a descendant of Mary, David, and Abraham. Mary, David, and Abraham were descendants of Adam and Eve. Therefore, Jesus Christ was a descendant of Adam and Eve. If Jesus Christ was the fruit of David's loins, as the Bible says, then Jesus Christ was the fruit of Adam's loins, because David was the fruit of Adam's loins. And so if Jesus Christ was really the seed of Abraham, then Jesus Christ was the seed of Adam, because Abraham was the seed of Adam. Dr. Zacharias Eusinius said, the argument which is drawn from these declarations made in relation to the Messiah is most convincing, for if the humanity which he assumed was from the seed of Abraham and of David, then he had a real human nature. Christ took this upon himself, and not a nature created out of nothing or brought down from heaven. The flesh of Christ is the flesh of Adam. Where did Jesus Christ get his humanity from? Where did Jesus Christ get his human nature from? How did Jesus Christ become a member of the human race? It was through his earthly mother Mary 
who is a descendant of Adam and Eve. While I was open-air preaching at the University of Alabama in Birmingham, one of the students was excusing his sinfulness by saying, we're all born sinners. I said, no, we're born innocent babies and we become sinful by our own free choice. If you're a sinner, it's your own fault. He said, but don't we descend from Adam? I said, yes, we descend from Adam, just like Jesus Christ descended from Adam. He said, no, Jesus Christ was the Son of God. I said, yes, he was the Son of God, but he was also the Son of Man. Didn't Jesus descend from King David? He said, yeah, he descended from David, but through his mother. I said, well then, through his mother, Jesus Christ was also the Son of Adam, because David was a son of Adam. And the student at this point was unable to respond. He couldn't refute this logic, so he was completely silent. An explicit statement from God should settle all theological disputes on that particular subject. And so listen to what God himself had to say about Jesus Christ being a descendant of Adam and Eve. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Genesis 3.15 this passage is considered to be prophetic of the incarnation of Jesus Christ and his ultimate triumph and victory over the devil. John Wesley said, A gracious promise is here made of Christ as the deliverer of fallen man from the power of Satan. Notice is here given them concerning Christ, his incarnation, that he should be the seed of the woman. If Jesus Christ was the seed of the woman, then he was necessarily also the seed of the man, because Eve could not have children on her own. The children of Eve are in fact the children of Adam. So if Jesus Christ is a, is a child of Eve, then he is also a child of Adam. If Jesus Christ is the seed of the woman, he is also the seed of the man. So no Bible passage can make it any clearer than that Jesus Christ is a descendant of Adam and Eve through his earthly mother Mary. The ancestors that a person has through their mother are no less their ancestors than who they have through their father. And the ancestors a person has through their father are no more of their ancestors than who they have through their mother. The ancestors a person has through their mother and through their father are both equally their ancestors. And therefore, the virgin birth of Jesus did not nullify, exclude, or negate the human ancestry Jesus had through his mother. Otherwise, the uh, virgin birth would have excluded Jesus from being a son of Abraham or a son of David. But since the Bible affirms that Jesus was of the seed of David and of the seed of Abraham, despite his virgin birth, then it's not unscriptural to say that Jesus Christ was of the seed of Adam despite his virgin birth. You see, the virgin birth did not make the human lineage or the Adamic ancestry of Jesus Christ somehow illegitimate. Uh, Jesus Christ had legitimate human ancestors through his mother. So Jesus was both human and divine. He was the Son of God and the Son of Man. He was born of God and he was born of man. The phrase Son of Man is actually an Old Testament phrase. It's used 108 times in the Old Testament. In the Hebrew, which is where this phrase originates, the word for man is Adam. So to be a son of man is actually to be a son of Adam. That's because if you're not a descendant of Adam, you're not really part of the human race. If you're not a descendant of Adam, you're not really part of mankind. But in the New Testament, this phrase, Son of Man, is applied to Jesus 85 times. It's used in all four Gospels, in the Epistles, and Jesus himself would use it. But what could the Bible mean in using the phrase, Son of Man, in reference to Jesus, except that Jesus Christ was truly a son of Adam? that he was part of the human race, that he was part of Adam's family tree. And if Jesus Christ was not the son of Adam, then Jesus Christ was not truly the son of man. Being a child of Mary 
put Jesus into a particular family. Being a descendant of David put Jesus into a lineage of kings. Being of Judah made Jesus part of a certain tribe of Israel. Being a descendant of Abraham made Jesus a Jew or an Israelite. And being a child of Adam made Jesus a human being that was part of the human race. There have been some that have rightly recognized that Jesus Christ was a descendant of Adam and inherited human nature through his mother, but they have falsely assumed that human nature was sinful and therefore concluded that Jesus Christ inherited a sinful nature. Abraham Tucker said, The sinful nature of Jesus, for that he did partake of a sinful nature by his birth from the woman, I see no reason nor scruple to doubt. He was a descendant of Adam, and when it is declared that in Adam all have sinned, no exception is made of him. This would be their reasoning put into a logical syllogism. The nature transmitted from Adam to his descendants is a sinful nature. Jesus was a descendant of Adam and inherited human nature from his mother. And therefore, Jesus inherited a sinful nature. You see, if you grant their premise, you cannot avoid their conclusion. But the fault in their logic is this presupposition that human nature is in and of itself sinful, or that man's composition and constitution can have intrinsic moral qualities. But they came to the wrong conclusion because they started with the wrong premise. The following is an example of how they should have rightly reasoned. Jesus was a descendant or posterity of Adam. Jesus was not formed or born with a sinful nature. Therefore, a sinful nature is not transmitted from Adam to all of his descendants and posterity. If Jesus Christ was sinless, which he undoubtedly was, then we cannot affirm that a sinful nature is transmitted from Adam to all of his descendants. And we cannot affirm that all of his descendants sinned in him, uh, being in his loins. And we cannot affirm that Adam's guilt is imputed to all of his descendants because he was somehow their representative. But the fact that Jesus Christ was a descendant of Adam and the fact that Jesus Christ was sinless and guiltless shows that men are not sinful or guilty merely for descending from him. It shows us that sin and guilt are not hereditary at all. The content in the video that you just watched is taken from a book that I've written called The Natural Ability of Man, A Study on Free Will and Human Nature. The book is a very thorough defense of man's free will, and the appendix of the book deals exhaustively with the question of whether or not man's nature is sinful. Now the book will be available for purchase very shortly at www.openairoutreach.com.